us well, Lord. Knowing you, Lord, beside us all is well, Father. Whatever, Lord, the situation, whatever, Lord, what is going wrong, Lord, as long as you remain beside us, Lord, all is well. More than that, Lord, you are not only beside us, Lord, but you are in us, Lord, to live in our power, Lord Jesus. Father, we praise you. We love you, Lord, for your wonders and your mercy. Father, thank you for the grace of predestination, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us, Lord, to be your children, to respond, Lord, for the call in this time, Lord Jesus. All is well, Lord. What a precious Lord you are, Lord Jesus Christ. How we love you, Father. How we praise your mighty and wonderful name, Lord. Glory be to your name, Jesus. Amen. And 
Apostle Paul says, sold under sin. He was sold under sin. And we all found out what sin is. Amen. He says, for that which I do, I allow not. Do you understand this is a little bit old formal English? It's quite hard for you to understand. It. He's saying this, I'm doing what I don't want to do. Are you with me? What I want to do, I can't do it. Because I'm under the sin. Amen. So, most of the people, they want to be good, isn't it? Even you, friends, you want to be good Christians, you want to be good uh, children to your parents, but sometimes it's hard. Amen. So, why do you find this hard? It's not something is happening outside of you, but something is happening in you. Amen. So, our title today is The Greatest Battle Ever Fought. Amen. Amen. You found out that you, you have battle in yourself. But when we say that, we were created in three beings. Amen. You know this one well. We have, this one is, you're familiar with this uh, body, okay? Body and spirit, okay? And soul. So this is you. We have five senses here, okay? And we have five senses here as well. But in the soul, okay, we have only doubt, okay, or faith. So there's no five senses in there, just one. So if faith is there, faith is going to take doubt off. If doubt is there, faith is going to die. So that's why. You always have a battle. As I always say, like, but what I'm saying, your enemy is not outside of you. Your enemy is yourself. So you have to fight against yourself. One day I was listening to uh, one brother I was preaching, but uh, his name is uh, but, uh, Beckett from South Africa. He said, you need divorce from yourself. He said, you need to divorce with your own flesh. Amen. So you are two beings. One is the man of flesh. This man here has got his desire. It's pulling you out of God. You must know that this man here wasn't created to contact God. Amen. But I want to say that this one wasn't created to contact God. God doesn't have anything to do with this one. But, but when I say that, inside of you, there's another being inside of you, this, which was created in the image of the living God. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, if God is the Logos in the beginning, the one who was created in his own image must be like himself. Amen? Amen. So we have that man there, Created in the image of God. And every day they are fighting. I'm telling you, every day there's a fight for everyone, even for me. Amen. Because I want to be good, I want to be perfect. But it's, you can't be perfect if you are not fighting. Amen. But you must know something. But I want to say that I am perfect. And but I want to ask a question again. He said, Do I commit sin? Do I make mistakes? He said, Of course, yes. But 
are still perfect. He said, why? It's because, he said, because God gave me his perfection. Amen. 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 So you can't be perfect without God. You know, some people, hear white people, they say sometimes that, oh, I'm a good man. I'm doing good. I can help poor people. And I can do all good things. Because one day I'm going to die. I want to go to heaven. And when one say that, that's not the way you go to heaven. The only way to heaven is Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is the nature God is going to give to you to prevail against Satan, against your own body. Amen. It's what I call it the power of transformation. Are you with me? Is it out? Is it okay? Now, every day, these two people here, they keep fighting. This one said, hey, listen, me, I want cinema. This one will say, me, I want to show off. Me, I want me, me. Amen. This one is puffed up, is uh, so much proud. But this one is humble. And both of them, everyone has got value. This one has got value, and this one also has got the value. Let me get my pointer for a moment here. Now, most of the time, we think that we are this one. As we spoke last time, this body is the temple. Yet, we have to keep it clean because it's the temple. The purpose of this one is God to live inside. Are you with me? According to our lessons of last time, last Sunday, this one was a temple. But what is important for you is this soul. This inside mind, man, inside of you, that's the most important thing. Amen. That's why in the song we've been singing here, we said, there is a rest, a perfect rest beyond the inner veil. The inner veil, this one is a veil. Even the word of Jesus was a veil. But you must go inside. Amen. Amen. So don't remain here. But when we say that God has got a free, uh, a house with three parts. Amen. Amen. This one is the uh, living room. He said, you can invite Jesus. Say, Jesus, please come in my house. And just remain. Stay in the living room. I don't want you in my kitchen. Jesus will say, okay, that's fine. He's going to live there. You're going to have a... It's going to be uh, looking like you are a good Christian. But in the battle against yourself, you never win. That's why you see so many people today, they are hypocrites. Because they invited Jesus only in the first part of the house. Jesus. So Jesus come and remain only in my flesh. Because I want to show the people that I'm a good Christian. I'm a good message believers. And the message is not the matter of showing people. It's the matter of your own self-relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the word. Amen. Amen. So secondly, people say, oh... I want Jesus to come in my kitchen as well. Come and have a place in the kitchen so we can eat together. But when I said that Jesus standing in the door is knocking on the door. He showed a picture. There was a door without, uh, I don't know how you call it, uh, the handle, without the handle. Poignier. A handle. He said, why? He said, because the handle was inside. He said, the person who, uh, the one who was inside, is the one who was supposed to open the door for Jesus to get in. Amen. 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 And now, when Jesus comes, it depends to you, to the place you are going to give to Jesus. If you take Jesus, 
stay there, leave, uh, just sit down in the living room, wait for the food there, Jesus is going to sit down there. And in that time, in that stage, you are going to have a very example life to the sight of the people. People will appreciate you. You are a good man. You are doing a good job. Amen. You are a good Christian. But the good testimony is what God says. Amen. So, in the first, the second part, you say, Oh, Lord, I want you also to come in my kitchen. So, come and see how we cook food. And sometimes we eat in the kitchen so we can sit down there and eat in the kitchen. Jesus said, Oh, that's fine. And Jesus will get inside there. But the most important part Jesus is looking for is inside there in your soul. Do you know why? Because Jesus will never become you in the flesh. He will never become you in the spirit. Jesus will become you only in your soul. When he's going to come there, he's going to blend himself with you to become one. That's why he said, me and my father will come in you, we dwell in you, sit upon and stop sleeping, we come in you and we become one. Amen. Amen. You sit properly. Don't sleep. Now, the thing is, so many people today, they are religious and they make themselves church members. Amen. They come to the church because uh, I want, I've got a new shoes, I want to show people that I've got a very bad new shoes, so people must see today that I'm the best in the church. Amen. Amen. And some people in some churches, they come, they'll show everyone that they know how to pray. They'll kneel down. Oh no, Jesus, even the tears will come down. Oh, that brother, oh, that sister, when she's praying, oh, she's a good sister in the spirit. Do you know, I'm surprised you, but apart from saying that, don't pray long prayers in the church. <laughs> he said, if you want to pray long prayer, he said, go in your house, lock yourself in your bedroom, and pray God. Because when you are praying, you are not talking to us. Amen. Amen. You are talking to God. You are not talking to me. Amen. I don't have to hear your prayer. It's not my business. Your prayer is talking to God. So if you want to get more time to speak to the Lord, so you must lock yourself in your bedroom, have your time kneel down, raise your hand, and pray God. Amen. I'm telling you, that's the only place God can answer your prayers. Amen. So Amen. as believers, we must come in that place where we have our own relationship with God. And then no one is going to push you to serve God. Amen. 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 It's like people are going to work because they know that if I don't work, I don't eat. Me, I start working at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm there on time every time. Every day of my work, I'm there on time. So, I wake up around 4, I prepare myself. Even when I first start working around 3 in the morning, isn't it? 2, can you imagine? So, you have to wake up and go to work. So, around 1 o'clock or uh, midnight, you wake up. When you're sleeping, you're snoring, he's preparing himself to go to work. Why? Because he knows that I need money to, uh, for my family and for myself. Do you understand? And now, if we have the same relationship with relationship with God, then no one is going to push us. The thing is, but I want to say that, uh, is the, the work of the soul. He said, because the word of God never reached the soul, that's why this part here is still winning the battle. So when, but I want to say that if you are overcomer, God will never put you only in the pipe. God will never put you only in the pipe and pull you to the other side and say that, oh, I'm an overcomer. He said, no, you have to fight. But the fight you have to fight is against yourself. Amen. 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 Romans said, Paul said, the law is spiritual. Amen. Amen. 
but I am carnal. Carnal water means the way of my thinking is still carnal. So I have to get in spirit for me to fight that good fight. He said, I'm sold under sin. What is sin? Sin is your own flesh. But when you say that, even the Bible says, I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I came in this world speaking lie. Amen. So get a little boy or a little girl. Ask, even in the house, who took the biscuit here? Do you know the answer? Wasn't me. It's very common here in England. Wasn't me. Because no one is going to teach them to lie. Because the lie is in their own body. You have to go to school to learn. You have to learn good manner. But bad things you don't have to learn. Because they are stuck in you. That's the reason we call it the body of sins. So now when God is coming to you, He's trying to clean you up to take all the bad thoughts away from you. Amen. Today, you see, everyone is using uh, social media. No one taught them how to do it. No one uh, helped them to use it. But for them, sir, because it's bad. Anything which is bad, you, you are going to notice that no one is going to teach you how to do it. You do it yourself. Every day, people, not only children, people, they are in front of the screen. So when you stay in front of the screen all day, what is going to happen? Your eyes, you are, you are affecting your eyes. So in the future, most of the people will wear glasses. If you go to schools today, most of the children have good glasses. Too much screens. No time for God. They've got time for social media. They've got time for something else than God. And most time you're giving to social media. Most time you're giving to your body. You are fighting against yourself. Because this man here is not you in reality. The true you is inside. Amen. Amen. You think that you love yourself, but you don't love yourself. Jesus said, if you want to keep your life, you lose it. <laughs> but if you lose it for me, you save it. The way of you saving your life is losing it. That means that you must give yourself feet more than most your soul instead of feeding your flesh. Because your flesh is the enemy. Your flesh is Satan himself trying to pull you down. Are you with me? So the big thing, but I want to say that this message has been preached only for the soul. The main purpose of this message is to get in your soul. And then the influence of your soul will come down in your spirit and in your body and you'll see a clean Christian man walking on the street. Not your own cleanness, but your cleanness is coming from the soul where God is dwelling. Are you with me? Amen. Praise God. Romans 7. The Bible said, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is, it is good. Now, then it is not no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Amen. Say, I want to do good, but I still can't do it. Amen. You see, it's, it's a great battle, and the apostle is trying to tell us how is how to fight against yourself. But now I like something here. He's saying that now, amen. Then it's not me, not more I that do it. I'm not responsible for that. But I'm saying that you can't be perfect. But you still make your mistakes. Amen. Amen. You can't make mistakes. I don't mean that you, you are uh, uh, zero mistake. 
No, this one is not going to happen. Even for me, do you understand? That's the very reason Jesus Christ died on the cross. Because no one could save himself. But I want to say that when it was in the of Eden, after the fall, Adam went to make himself fig leaves. He tried a religion to save himself. But I'm saying that it's not possible for you to save yourself. Amen. But you must live inside of inside. Then you bring the influence outside. Amen. The fight is still there. But you must make sure that you are feeding the most the inside mind. But anyway, you're still perfect. And the apostles say that I'm not responsible for that. Now, then it is no more I that do it. Because I'm feeling the most the inside man. So if some mistakes still stacking on me, it's not my responsibility, it, but it's but saying that girl in me. What is sin? This man here. This man is a very, very bad man. Not only because you're smoking. You can be someone who you don't smoke. You don't drink. You don't do bad, bad thing, evil. Amen. But what I'm saying is that you're still bad. Why? Because your understanding. Amen. The way you understand God, according to this man, is not the way God understands things. Let's say this. When God speaks about the blood, this man here sees, sees the red substance. Are you with me? But this one sees the life zoe of Christ. But I want to say that the body of Jesus Christ uh, didn't have enough blood to sprinkle all the believers. But when he shed his blood, the life of Jesus Christ came on the believers. So when God speaks about blood, it's not the red substance because even uh, animals they've got red blood as well. But the blood of Christ was the blood of G uh, God Himself to save the humanity. Amen. Amen. So you see, they've got different understanding. And this one also we call sin. So when we say that I'm the son of God, Jewish people they said God can't have a son because according to their own understanding, that you must get a wife to have a son. But God can create by the spoken word. God created and the son came in existence. So according to this man, it's not possible for God to have a son. But according to this man here, it's possible. And the Bible says that God spared not his only son. Who is the only son of, of, Jesus, of God? Jesus. How Jesus can be the only son when we are declaring also to be the children of God? Is God denying us or God is telling us the truth? So, the truth is to the understanding of this man. Because before God created all the world, he created only one man. Adam, inside of Adam, God saw so many people inside. And when God created only one man in the beginning, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Logos, inside of him, he produced more children. And all of us, we became just one son. There is no condemnation when everyone is in Christ. And Christ is the body of the believers. And that body of the believers makes only one, the only Son of God. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Is it clear? Praise God. Let's go to the next step. Praise God. Roman chapter 7, 18. For I know that in me, let's say, that is in my flesh. Between bracket. That is in my flesh. Dwell no good thing. <laughs> Do you believe the Bible? So the Bible is telling us that 
There dwelleth no good thing. Why I'm putting them side to side? Because they are enemies. They don't, they, they, they don't love each other. Do you know that? Amen? So you must know that these two people, they don't love each other. But I mean, do you understand this? But two of them, they are making just one person. That's the reason I call it the greatest battle ever fought. So you have to fight against yourself every day. When you wake up in the morning, tell yourself that, oh, the fight is on. <laughs> so you have to put your uh, uh, gloves of boxers, start fighting. Amen. You have a rest only when you're going to sleep. But in the morning when you wake up, tell yourself that the fight is on. So and so, until you die, you leave this earth. Amen. Amen. So you meet the battle. But I'm saying that the decision belongs to you. Amen. He preached something he called uh, a, a ceremony called a reaction to the action. Do you understand? Amen. So if I insult you, okay, I say, oh, you are ugly. It depends on you to accept it. If you accept that I'm ugly, then you start crying. Amen. Amen. But if I say that you are ugly, you say, I'm not. I'm beautiful. Amen. So you have to believe it yourself. It's your own conviction. So how come today someone's going to tell you that you are beautiful? You smile. And someone else is going to tell you you are ugly. You are unhappy. So who is directing you? So that means that you don't have your own control. You don't have control on yourself. Because someone is making your mood, is changing your mood. No, 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 no. That's not a child of God. Amen. Amen. A child of God, no one can change his mood. He's got the mood, his mood is getting his mood from the word of God. Amen. If the word of God says that you are a child of God, that settles it. Amen. Anyone can come to you and say, you are not a child of God. Say, I am a child of God. You made mistakes so and so. I said, yes, I know, but I'm still a child of, a child of God. Peter denied Jesus Christ, but yet he was a son of God. Amen. And you see, so many mistakes they did, they still the children of God. Even Thomas, he, he was an unbeliever to the promise of God. After three days, Jesus resurrected from death. He said, I don't believe it. I want to see first. It depends. He said, me, yes, I know that he said that, but before we believe, I want to see. And that, not only see, and also touch his hands. Mm -hmm. Then I will believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he was a child of God, he's not lost. Mm -hmm. So, you must uh, be confident to yourself. Be confident to the word of God. You repeat only what the word of God says, because the decision belongs to you. Don't let yourself under the influence of your friend in school because you are not the same. And you see the big difference between people. You, inside of you, you have this man, the one came from God. But some of people, they thought this one came from hell. The, the thing is, you can't change them. But you must know that you are a child of God. That means your actions in school must not be like everyone. They will mock you. They will tell you that, oh, you are, you, the way you dress, you don't look nice. Amen. You tell them I look nice. So many children, they are, uh, they are changing the way uh, of dressing because they are living under the influence of others. And those people change their mind. Now they start trying to look like others. But you can't be like them because your influence is not coming from outside. Your influence is coming from the inside. Are you me? So tell yourself, girls, tell yourself that you are beautiful, girls. Amen. The one who knows about beauty is God. Because God is the creator. So the beauty is not about what the world is saying. You are beautiful. The way God created you, you are beautiful. Let no one let you down about it. Amen. 
You are child of God, you are beautiful. But what I'm saying that the beauty is God inside of you. You can be beautiful, but if inside there you have a body from hell, you are still not beauty, beautiful. But if you are ugly here, and in, inside you are beautiful, that's the, the, the beauty according to God. Amen. So don't let anyone to change your way of thinking or the way of your perception. Amen. The body is sin. Dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I found not. Amen. For I know that in me that is my flesh dwelleth no good thing in this world. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I found not. I know that everything there is bad. How to do good thing? I, I found not. I can't do it. Because everything there is bad. It's like someone is sinking in the sinking sand. You know, when you are going down in the sinking sand, no one, you can't get yourself out. It's not possible. You need someone to pull you out. And in this case, no one, you, you can't help yourself with this man. You can't. It's absolutely impossible. Amen. And people say that I, need, I don't need God because I've got everything. I've got, uh, how do you call it? I've got NHS. I can't go to the hospital if I'm sick. I've got job. What God is going to do for me? If I need money, I'll go to school. Uh, so I'll go to work. I'll do business. I'll get um, uh, thousands of pounds. If I, I want to sleep, I've got a bed. So what God is going to do for me? Let me tell you, brother. There's something God is going to do for you which is beyond everything. Mm -hmm. I saw people laying in the hospitals with thousands and millions of pounds. They can't get out from that place. They need something supernatural to come and help them. Amen. In that time, the man will say God. Because in this one, there's no evil. There's no uh, good. There's only evil. So everything you're doing, for this man here, you are wasting your time. Walking is good. Buying houses, very good. I like that because I like houses. Nice car is good. Because I love cars. Amen. Amen. Dress yourself in good way. I love it. But it's still not important. Everything you are doing for this man here, this man wasn't designed to tell, to say thank you to you. Amen. If you give, but I want to say that if you buy shoes today, you see the little baby there, Isabel. You buy shoes today. After two weeks or a month, you have to buy another shoes for her. Because it's too small. Amen. Even for you, you, you have shoes today, and after tomorrow you don't like it anymore. You need another one. But I'm saying that you need desire. And the only thing can be satisfied is only your soul. The inside of inside. When you give the word of God to your soul, and your soul will be satisfied. There's nothing good coming from this man here. Amen. Now listen. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. As I said, he said, Paul said, I'm not responsible. Because the one is doing bad, it's not this one, it's this one. So you must have a revelation that this man here is the one that's doing everything, the bad thing. Amen. That's why you need God inside of you to save you from this man. So when you're talking about Satan, no one met Satan before. Did you meet Satan before? Do you know the house of Satan? No, you don't know. But every time we are talking about Satan, 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 where is Satan? Satan is here. Your own body is Satan. Amen. Because this man here came in the way of man. He didn't come in God's provided way. But man said that if you take a, a, a how do you call it, a egg, yeah? amen? amen? You take the egg and there's a little chick inside. You say, let's say a little chick, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna break this egg to help you to come out. So the little chick will tell you, no, 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 don't do it. So you can't help me because it's not God's provided way. So God's provided way is that the little chick must, uh, how do you call it, must knock on the, uh, on, on, on the egg. So from the inside, you must break it. So when you are inside, when God is coming, knocking your door, you have to open the door yourself. In the same way as the chick must break the egg from the inside. Do you understand? If you come outside and break the egg, you kill the chick. Because you don't know it's ready or not. The only person need that uh, knows that it's ready is the chick inside of the egg. Amen. God's provided way. So you can't save yourself out of God's provided way. What is the God provided way today? He said, I'll send you Elijah, the prophet. Are you free? So that means that outside of a legend prophet is hard to find salvation, even impossible. Because what man said that God sent Moses for the promise he gave to Abraham. He said, Your uh, children will be in, sla in slavery in Egypt for 400 years. But I'll come and deliver them with my mighty hand. And the mighty hand of God was Moses. Amen. Amen. So in human understanding, you think that God has got a big hand, he's going to pull down and pull them out. Are you with me? So this man here, we think that if the big hand of God with five fingers, we come down and pull them out. But this man here knows that the, man, the hand of God is the prophet. Moses was God's provided way to take them out. And today, God's provided way is Bana Bana. Amen. Are you free? Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. It's your responsibility. responsibility. I found them a law that when I will do good, evil is present with me. Is it so? I want to do good. We want to do good here. Everyone. But you find that evil is still stuck in you, isn't it? Yes? Why? It's because of this man. So, this one, so, so don't, don't like this one. Why? So, I saw so many people, why you believe the message? The message you uh, believe us there, uh, the sisters there, they don't wear trousers, they don't do this and that. <laughs> so what is going to change? Mm. Amen. If you go to the public toilet, you see, uh, to the men's toilet is someone standing there with trousers. Mm. But if you go to the ladies' toilet, is someone standing there with a, a skirt? Who made it mean? No. Because the skirt is not the garment of men, and trousers is not the garment of girls. Amen. Amen. So the message is still right. Now people they are twisting. Men want to become uh, girls, and girls will, like they want to become men. You see girls walking like this on the street. Amen. There are some girls that walk more faster than me. What kind of girl is that one? A girl is a girl, it's a character. Do you understand? And you see some uh, little sissy boys walking like this. But what I'm saying is a perversion. Everything is corrupted in this world. They don't care about God anymore. Oh, but let God be seen in you. Let people see God in you. Amen. Amen. So let us go and close it. Now, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I, de I, I delight, do you know what that means? I love. I love the law of God where? In the, what? After the inward man. The inside man. Amen? After the inside man, not 
the outer man. But I see another law in my members, in my body. Amen. Warring against the law of my mind. It's a fight. It's a fight. The state they're fighting. And bringing me into captivity to the law. Amen. You know, Moses gave the law to the children of Israel. Still not. Tell not. But this morning, honor your father and your mother. Blah, 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 blah. How many of them? Ten commandments. All of them was good. Amen. Remember, one day, that boy was coming in front of Jesus. He said, Master, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? What Jesus said? Jesus said, respect the laws of Moses. Amen. And he said, I've been respecting those laws since my youth. Was it enough? No. What Jesus said? He said, that's good. The Bible says that Jesus loved him. He was a very fine brother, the good one. Notice, and Jesus said that, and one thing is missing. What is that? He said, go and sell all your goods and take money, not keep the money in your pocket, take money and sell, give it to the poor people. Not only that, and come now and follow me. That means that that man was observing all the ten laws of Moses without following God. You can be a good man, you can do everything, but if you don't follow Jesus, you are wasting your time. Amen? You notice one thing here. When Jesus came, he said, all the laws, they are fine. Amen? But there's only one law. In that law, everything is inside. What, what was the law? Love. Because if I love my father, I will know them. Amen. If I love my friends, I will tell good testimony. If I love my, my parents, I will never steal their money because they get angry. So you don't have to observe all the laws, but you have only to keep one law, which is love. And what is love? Love is God himself. So by following Jesus is to follow love and to get love inside of you. Then you overcome, you'll be able to, uh, to do all the ten laws of Moses. Amen. Amen. Listen now. Into captivity to law of sin, which is in my memory. So Paul said that I'm a captive. I'm a prisoner to the law of sin. Are you with me? So where is this, the, the law of sin? He said, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is where? In my members, in my body. I want to be good, but I'm still captive of a prisoner in the body of flesh. That the reason is what one said that the body of flesh is kind of prison. So when you die, so that the way you get the liberty or the freedom. I fly away, oh glory. I fly away. Uh, one day when I die, I fly away. Because you are a prison, like a prison, like a bird in the prison, in the cage. One day I'll fly away. Amen. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So then, with the mind I must I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. So the flesh will always do the work of sin. But you must fight. Don't give up. Say, oh, let me do only what this man wants to do. No, 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 no. You have to put this man here 
under the influence of this one. Do you understand? This one must have more influence than this one. If you want to do something against this one, say, hey, you, you stop. I want to serve this law here, the law of God. What is the law of God? Love. If you love God, you come to church. Amen? If you love God, you come here, do the works. If you love God, after meeting, you get things together, put them in there. Amen? If you love God, you do things for God. Praise God. Listen. But I'm saying this one. Sometimes I notice people go out. I was standing by a big museum here not long ago. And I seen the analysis of the human body. He said I was he went to the museum. They were doing the analysis of a human body. Do you know how much does it cost? Who knows the price of your body? Do you know the price? How much does it cost? 84 cents of dollars. Do you know how much is going to be in pound, your body? 84 cents in dollars in pound is going to be something like 50p. <laughs> That's you. Amen. That's you. 50p. Listen. And I seen the analysis of human body, a man that weighs it 150 pound. So it was a big man. This 50p is only for someone big. Let's say here, like Bonaparte. <laughs> so if Bonaparte costs 50p, amen. So when you take by Eric, so you go down maybe 40 feet, 45 feet. Keep going down. Until you come to the little baby, it's, it's, it's going to cost about 5p. But when I'm saying that, put your finger in the bucket of water, take it out. What do you see there? He said nothing. He said it's what you want. So we are giving time to something which is not important. That's the thing with the believers. We care about this man too much. And we don't care about the spiritual man. So if we have the revelation, then we care more about our souls than about this man of sin. About our enemy. You are feeding him too much. Amen? What is this? <laughs> Listen. A man that weighed 150 pounds was worth 84 cents in chemicals. Your body is made with chemicals. Do you know that? So if we take your body but I'm saying that most of your body is only water. <laughs> so if we break you, we make chemicals with your body. So that chemical, we are going to, we're going to sell it for, uh, 84 cents, even less. And but I'm saying that that chemical is not even enough to paint a bird nest. Hmm. Amen. Do you know the bird, the, the bird nest? Yeah? Do you know how small it is? He said the chemicals from your body will not be enough to paint the nest of a bird. So this one means that we are nothing. So if you understand that you are nothing, you are not going to show off. I'm the best. So who is the best? They put 84 cents, 50p, that's the best. No chance. Listen, brothers and sisters. You can be a king. You can be the queen. Prince William, uh, Harry, uh, Me uh, Me uh, Meghan. Yeah? I mean, uh, I don't know the Prince Charles Kate. All of them, they cost only 50p or less. Even the queen, she costs 50p. But you could find out. You are more than the queen. Amen. I love that. Could you think of it and then you think you are somebody? You are worth 84 cents. That's right. Say amen. 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 Praise be to God. Oh, I like this one. Put 
I take dollar hard on 84 cent and think you are somebody. Mm. See my coat here, maybe it costs 15, 15, uh, 15 pounds. My shoes maybe cost uh, uh, 30 pounds. They're still more expensive than my body. Amen. So they cost more, more than my body because I have nothing. Do you understand? And I'll take care of it without taking care of my soul. That's the problem. Most of the people, but I don't know, God told Barabana. Record the message and put the message in the books. Why? Because people will come, they will listen to the message and they must read the books. In the Bible, we don't have time to read it. We don't have time to read the message. That's the reason we have so much trouble in the message. So if you know that your enemy is yourself, there's no way you're, you're going to fight your brother. Me, I don't fight anybody. Because I fight myself. My, I'm my own enemy. My brother and sisters, they are not my enemies. I never think something like that. I'm my own enemy. I must fight against myself. Somebody does something against you, you've got the decision to make. You can get angry or you can just smile. It depends on you. You don't have to hate them. Amen. See someone like Jesus, a very powerful man, standing there on the cross. You know that like Jesus was powerful and could do this and everything changed. But Jesus knew that if I do it, these people will be lost. And he had to keep quiet. He took the decision to ignore everything. Even to the end of his life, he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. So now you tell me, have you been made in trouble more than Jesus? No. Is someone doing something bad more than what they did to Jesus? No. That means that we can have a power of decision to never get angry to anything. As a child of God, always all is well. Amen. Amen. I saw my wife, a uh, woman, she had a dead baby in the, in the bedroom, and she went to see the prophet of God, and when she met the prophet of God, she, uh, the prophet of God said, oh, my sister, are you okay? She said, all is well. Because the main thing was to meet the prophet. Nothing else. She doesn't care about the baby, the dead baby in the, in the bedroom, or whatever someone is beside. No, the main thing was to meet the prophet. Because the prophet was the temple of God in that time. And when she met the prophet, she said, all is well. Amen. As long as you have God inside of you, all is well. I like that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And listen now, I'm closing. He said, that's right. But remember, in there, or all of this, listen, in there, you've got a soul that's worth how many? How many walls? 10,000 walls. So this man has got more value than the outside man. Are you familiar? It's got more value. Even when you're sick, this man here never gets sick. Even you die, this man here will never die. But the Bible says that if you are a child of God, you will never die. What is going to happen? You are going to change the dwelling place. If this tent in which you are living is destroyed, you've got another one waiting. Praise God. So you just jump in, you are there, and start watching this rubbish. 80 cents. Mm. Yeah, what is that? Ah. <laughs> what is that? And you know one day, Barabara went to the, beyond the capital of time. When he, when, when he went there, so he saw all the saints coming to him. And uh, the angel asked him, You do know uh, this sister here? And Barabara said, No, I don't know. And the angel said, This sister, 
you, you, you brought her to the uh, to message. But mom said, no, I don't remember. And the angel said, she was 90 years old. So wow, she's a young girl now. Do you understand? So she was in that body now, the world body. Now, the angel told Barbara and said, okay, Billy, now it's done. So you can go back in your body. And Barbara said, huh? Do you mean me have to go back in that 84 cents again? And the angel said, Billy, you have to go back because your time is not end yet. You still have more job to do. Amen. And but when I'm saying that, amen, if you have a job to do in this world, Satan will never do anything against you. Amen. amen. So Satan will never touch you. Even if you fall sick, I don't, I don't know, I don't care how. Satan will never touch you as long as you are attached to God. Brothers and sisters, serving God is a protection for you. So serving God has got so much benefits on it. Amen. You know, I was even telling myself, even if I'm not a predestinated sin, I'll serve God. Because you get much benefits. God is protecting you. God is there in time of trouble. God is good. And when you are respecting God, God is trying to prevent you against bad, against bad things. It's kind of protection for you. So, it's much more better to serve God than to serve this man of flesh. Amen. Praise God. But remember, in your in there, you've got a soul that's worth 10,000 worlds. Amen. Amen. And you let the devil push that around anyway. Yes, that's right. But I want to say that if you go to the restaurant, they give you a a bowl of soup like this, okay? Okay? A bowl of soup like this. Ah, yummy. Amen. 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 And before you eat, you found in the soup there's a spider. I don't care how the soup is, uh, nice it looks like. I want to eat it. But the Bible says that you are going even to jump and scream out and call the manager say, come see here, there's a spider in the soup. And the manager said, no, you can't eat it, no problem. Say, no, 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 I can't eat it. Why? Because it's dangerous for your health. And the Bible says that if you care about 84 cents, what about that soul uh, which costs 10,000 walls. So you need, you think people must think now. Amen. Which one you think the most? Closing. I'm closing by saying this. But what I'm saying, hey, not long ago, I was in the West, heard of an Indian God converted. Said, how are you feeling? Listen, how you feeling, Chief? After a few days, he said, well, pretty good and pretty bad. An Indian man from America was converted. How are you? He said, I'm good and bad. So, what do you mean good and bad? He said, I had a dream, and inside of my dream, I've got two dogs. One was a white dog, and one was a black dog. He said, what happened? He said, both of them, they keep fighting each other all the time. And my mom said that, which one wins? But I want to say that, the one you feed the most. Amen. Which one do you feed the most? Listen. What do you, he said, what do you mean pretty, uh, pretty good? said, well, since I got served, said, I like this one, since I got served, amen, when it came to the Lord, then the fight is on. Because people outside, they don't have to fight. But when I say that, the sin, I cannot sin. Because it's sin to begin with. Are you free? The fish cannot be wet. 
Because the fish is living in the water. Mm. Only you can be wet because you don't live in the water. Do you understand? Now the fight starts when you, convert, you are converted. Now when you believe, you accept Christ in your life as your savior, then you start fighting now. Mm. Amen? He said, when I got saved, I got saved, said, there's two dogs in me. Said one, one is black and one is white. And they just fight all the time. They fight all the time. So what is the problem? So in their family, Erika, we don't have to fight against Becky. And uh, Becky don't have to fight against uh, Banel or against Christian because you are not enemies. Are you free? Because your enemy is yourself. Those two dogs say the black dog wants me to do bad. Amen. And the good dog wants me to do good. Or the white dog wants me to go and to do good. Said which one wins, chief? If you read it, they say the one you are feeding the most. Now let us go for a little exercise. You tell me what kind of food this white dog needs? The word of God. Amen. So who can tell me what kind of food this one needs? Speak loud. Huh? What's that? The students are like what? Game. Game. <laughs> Facebook. Instagram. Gambling. Instagram. What did you guys come on? No, tell me one, you know. Snapchat. What I can show you. What? What did you say? He took my answer. He took your answer. <laughs> <laughs> you see somebody? Xbox. Xbox. <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> what are we doing? Huh? PlayStation. PlayStation. PlayStation? Oh, it comes back again. Messenger. Messenger. <laughs> against the somebody? Huh? Tinder. Tinder. What is that? <laughs> okay, games. And also, smoking a cigarette, drinking alcohol, and so bad things. But I want to say that the, the death of the Holy Ghost is the word, the regime. The regime you said to speak, c'est la parole. So the only way for you to feed this white dog is to feed him with the word of God. Now you tell me, this is sincere. Which one do you feed the most? You tell me. Or some other chest. Which one do you feed the most? Sincere. Yeah. According to what we said, which one do you feed the most? The <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? You kind of doubt in your answer. We believe you. Sister Becky. Why not? Do you feel the white dog? I know you know you don't. Do you read the, you read the word of God every day? Do you pray every day? Sure. Okay. So it seems like you don't like the black dog. <laughs> but I was. Which one do you feel the, the, the moon? Huh? White dog. Are you sure? But able. Uh, Which one do you feel the most? I think both. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, a, a little, no, it's not really sincere. Yeah. It's a little bit sincere, much better. <laughs> but then it's you. Which one do you feel the most? <laughs> Tell me the truth. Which one do you feel the most? Both. 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 Sister Priscilla, which one do you feel the most? Both. Sister Erica. The black one. Yeah. She's sincere. But a prince. White. 
Do you feel the white one? Yeah. Yeah, do you know why? But our prince fits the, the white one. Do you know why? Because according to his age, it's still okay. God can come in. So, uh, little Ezra, even Sharon, the sister Bonnell, uh, you? No. <laughs> little Is Isabel. All of them, they feed the white dog. Because it's still small. But you guys, this is the principles. If you feed this one, you are, this one is going to win. If you feed this one, it's going to win. So this is the principle. You can't go out of it. So from now, you must know which one you are feeding the most. Amen? Amen. So from now, you take the decision. I don't care who do you feed now. So from now, Sister Erica, I think Sister Erica was a little bit sincere, but I know she feeds this one a little bit more. Yeah, I know her. Yeah? So, try to... Feeding both is bad. You need to feed this one. Because this one, you don't have to feed it because he's going to feed it himself. He's going to pull it from you. Do you understand? And Paul said that, I want to do good, but evil is still stuck in me. So you don't have to give him a chance to feed him. Because he's going to get it anyway. So try to feed this one the most. And when this one is getting more food, it's going to become bigger. And it's going to fight against this one. This one is going to uh, lose the battle. Amen. Amen. That one will be the winner. And this one will be the loser. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided, Amen. To take a decision now, yeah. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I don't know if you have it there. No turning back. Father, truly, you see the 
deepness of the heart. We are not doing what we want to do, Lord. But we do believe, Lord, you have more power, Lord, to deliver us from it, Father. But the reason, Lord, we trust you, Lord, how good you are, Lord, whatever our mistakes, Lord, you never forsake us, Lord. By your grace, Lord, and by your tender hand, Lord, you always deliver us in every part of our life. That the reason, Lord, we come, Lord, as one person to say thank you to you. Once more, Lord, we praise your name. Receive, Lord, honor and glory for this wonderful moment, Lord. And we commit, Lord, our men meeting in the Holy Ones. Please, Lord, come and speak to your heart. We love you, Lord. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Go for a little prayer.